Yo. Since that. Hey guys, how you doing? Nick Dennis from Guitar Interactive GI Plus. It's Monday. Today, we're doing the thing that we do on Mondays, which is hang out and talk about the guitar specifically. We're hanging out in my new studio, and we're talking about a very specific guitar. This guitar is the Ciari Ascender. And Ciari Guitars says so up here, so it must be true. Ciari Guitars have been kind enough to sponsor today's stream. Now, you guys may have checked out the uh, review we did of the Ciari Ascender in the latest edition of Guitar Interactive Magazine. If you haven't done so already, be sure to go and check it out. This guitar is, who it's something. Really great guitar. Uh, these guys have kind of cracked the code on the travel guitar uh, business, if that makes sense, because like that is uh, literally it's it's something that loads of people have tried to do and uh in my opinion have, have kind of failed um you know there's lots of great guitars out there i'm sure this is the first time i've come across a guitar that you can legitimately travel with um in the sense that what you saw in the intro it folds in half um it's crazy it comes in a tiny little gig bag but it's a pro level instrument right this is a four figure instrument comes with like Seymour Duncan stuff, it's plecked, uh, Joe Glazer was involved in the design process. Before we get like super into it, I just wanna show you the back because this is absolutely crazy, right? Take a look at this. This is the uh, this is the back of the Ciari Ascender and this is the mechanism that we fold it with. It's nuts, right? So I'll show you a little more about that in a little bit, but very, very cool guitar. Just want to take a quick second, by the way, if you are joining us for the first time, I want to welcome you on board. Thank you so much for coming to see us. This is something we do every Monday. We hang out, we talk about the guitar, but more importantly, we give you guys free guitar lessons uh, on all manner of subjects. So if you're enjoying what we're doing, make sure you hit that subscribe icon and let us know that you're getting some value of what we're doing. So the subscribe button is down there, down below. Also, if you want to... Um, kind of help us out even further if you're really enjoying what we're doing here the thing that enables us to continue bringing these streams to you is uh going to this link down here this is guitarinteractivemagazine.com forward slash gi plus see this guy right here guitarinteractivemagazine forward slash gi hyphen 
Plus. That is where you go to get more guitar lessons like the one uh, we're going to give you today on the subject of Shred. It's part of a series. You may have noticed the part one at the beginning. Um, but also you can get guitar lessons on everything from jazz to blues, country, metal, uh, theory, beginner stuff, acoustic stuff, you name it. We have lessons from Andy James, Andy Wood, Rick Graham, Tom Quayle, uh, Sam Bell, Giorgio Cerci, Michael Caswell, myself, Lewis Turner, Ian Simo. We have slide guitar lessons you name it, it's all in there it's a huge huge library of content that you are unlikely to get through in a lifetime and more importantly it costs absolute peanuts right to uh be a member of gi plus so if you're not a member maybe today is the day also if you're one of our returning streamers i want to welcome you back it is great to have you we had a few teething issues with my studio move last week uh i think we've ironed those out so this is my new studio welcome uh i'm really pleased to be here uh, um, as uh, <laughs> as has rightly been pointed out, let's just take a quick look at that comment very quickly, just to remember who it was. I think it was David Yates. I'm not sure, but uh, there was reference to my man cave. It was David Yates. It says Nick, are you in your man cave? To all intents and purposes, basically, yeah. So um, I have a studio now, and this is uh, this is the studio. So I'm uh, no longer in my house. I'm I'm in an actual studio, and it's great. It's the best thing ever. Right? I'm looking at so much stuff. I got so many apps behind you. It is the beans it's so good so anyway listen i'm going to take a quick second check in with the uh comment section make sure everybody's good and then we're going to get into the meat of today's lesson which is as you probably guessed shred related so let's first uh see who's first in the door marcin was first now house. marcin is uh, always first in probably 90 percent of the time always good to have you marcin is a great guitar player i love seeing videos of his band if you're not following marcin on instagram you should right great stuff uh marcin was in at uh, 14 minutes past six uk time today so almost two hours early we love it guy guy one is in the house good to see you uh pj is here celebrating his first day back at uni looking forward to this even more so than normal man hopefully the first day back is treating you well it was my first day back teaching at the uni um like i'm gonna have to cough excuse me uh, first bit day teaching uh, last week, so I'm happy to be back too. Uh, who else do we have in the house? Let's see. Timothy Appling is here. Timothy, it's great to see you. Uh, time to shred. Take two. Got my SG on standby again. Great choice for the all shreddies is the SG. Um, it's a very, very cool thing. Response audio is in the house. Uh, good to see you. Always here with the comments, with some great insights uh, and some great crack too. Justin Ray is here. Uh, I've been missing these streams. Like gets hectic, but as long as you play guitar in a band, things will be just awesome. I can confirm that is a hundred percent the case. Uh, Larry Warren is here. Larry, great to see you. Hey, guitar peoples. Uh, hello, one and all. Good to see you. Cracker Tom is continuing his travels. Uh, one of these days, Cracker Tom is going to be our first streamer to join us from the surface of the moon. He seems to just get all over the place. He's in Portugal. Uh, to Today, which is especially painful to me given that it's just started to turn cold for the autumn uh, here in the UK. But joking aside, it's great to have you on board, man. Uh, one of our German correspondents, always love to have you here. Uh, the enrichment of a stroll through Salema is too strong. Well, the enticement uh, of a stroll is too strong. <laughs> My travel telly and I will catch him on YouTube. You know what? Like, Cranker Tom, you in particular need one of these, man, because you are the, the traveling king of our little streaming uh, community. Sing your Godslayer, our shred correspondent that is here uh he's gonna be uh chiming in i'm sure with some fantastic tips for you shredders out there uh keith mof says evening nick evening everyone hoping uh to learn a technique to fast playing well we're gonna hook you up man we're gonna show you how you can develop some uh speed in your playing today even it's more importantly even if you're not already a shreddy kind of character so you guys know that i'm into all that sort of thing um as you probably would have seen from the intro jam um but hey you know this doesn't assume anything we're gonna like crack the streaming egg for you guys Guys, if that makes any sense so we've got some more great comments let's just take another quick second and see what else in there justin ray's got a fantastic fantastic uh tip for all of our shredders i'm going to start that up we're going to come back to that in a little bit there's some very very good salient points there uh in fact we could just end the stream there but uh, no i'm joking um mark crandall is here mark crandall's great to see you hello fellow guitar engineers hope everyone's doing well noon here and a beautiful day in socal uh 
Again, jealous. It's pretty cold here in the northeast of England, but that's fine. I'm here for it. Uh, Cow Cat is in the house. Oh, we get some love for Johnny uh, Highland. Great guitar player. Kim, the big boss is here. Kim, it's great to see you. Uh, we've been shooting some really exciting stuff down in Romford uh, recently um, at uh, Lick Library headquarters, no less. We've got some really exciting stuff coming from you over there. Expect to see some more streams from me on the Lick Library channel uh, later this month. That's going to be good fun. Christopher Sidney Brown. I keep calling Chris Brown, uh, but we need to make a distinction there. Um, not that Chris Brown is uh, is in the house. Good to have you on board. Been playing along with uh, one of our backing tracks, which is killer. I love seeing Chris's uh, stuff. Really, really into that. Um, good evening. Not sure that a 64, that at 64 uh, and only four years into my journey, I'll ever be able to shred, but no harm in trying. Phil Jones, we're going to see if we can get you moving those fingers uh, in a rapid fashion state. Um, now, shred is a relative term. But, uh, you know, we'll get to that. Who else do we have? Uh, David Yates is here. We've already said hello to David Yates. Helmet Strap is here. Good to have you on board. Sergey is here. Uh, who else do we have? Um, let's very quickly uh, just make sure we've got everyone. Falk Hornish is here. Uh, Alan Barham is here. Uh, forgot to click the play triangle icon. Oh, no. Uh, well, you're here now. Black Crow Busker is here. Good to have you. Uh, who else do we have? Let's more friends. Uh, Michael says, I see some IKEA parts at your studio. For sure, IKEA desks. The reason we chose these is like, these um, IKEA uh, wee bits furniture are the perfect size for um, a small 19 inch rack head. Nick Harrison is here. Uh, need some advice, says Tommy. Uh, Tommy, if you let us know what advice you need, I'll be happy to provide it, right? Let us know, let us know. Colin O'Hare is here, good to see you. Uh, Robert Goldsmith, 10 minutes in, he's quite right. Time to hear some instructions, so let's get into it. Very quickly though, just a reminder, if you've got questions, Drop the questions in the comments. Would love to hear from you. So if you have questions at any point, we'll be asking them. Just a very quick reminder, this stream is brought to you by our friends at Ciari Guitars. You can check out the Ciari Ascender review in the most recent edition of Guitar Interactive Magazine. In case you guys missed the start, I just want to show you this little clip. It's like 40 seconds worth of clip from the, uh, <laughs> the review. This is wild. When we come back, we're going to shred. <laughs> crazy right like just absolutely bonkers i love this guitar it's it's a wonderful thing and you know they've been kind of to sponsor this stream you guys know our policy on gear like we only promote gear that we actually like uh and this is and we reject a lot of gear let me tell you we have a very high rejection rate of gi this is one of our favorites right check it out it comes in this bag that's insane. Very quickly, speaking of bags, uh, if you guys want to get hold of a CRE Ascender, which you should, they've been kind enough to provide a special offer to uh, folks who are viewing the stream. You can click the link down below. You can go and get that bag comes free with the guitar, but you can also go and get a CRE backpack, which is a really high quality backpack worth $150 for free if you order through our link, which is cool. Very, very nice. So go click that link down below or use the code Guitar Interactive at checkout. Anyway, that's enough talk of the guitar. Let's talk about playing the guitar so first of all let's talk about shred now today is our shred primer now what this means is we are going to be uh essentially getting you guys ready to play some faster lines on the guitar and we're going to begin by doing some stuff uh that's kind of a fact finding mission so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you guys some shapes on the guitar that we're going to play we're not going to concern ourselves too heavily with uh the actual musical content we're playing today but i want you to come away from this stream with something that you can play right something that you can play so for the purpose of today everything we're going to play is going to be in the key of e minor so that's E minor. If you're a little bit more uh, savvy in terms of your musical theory knowledge, this is going to be Aeolian. So natural minor kind of stuff. We're not going to be doing any uh, kind of outlandish tonalities today. We discussed a lot of that in our blue streams recently. But let's begin with a fairly simple pattern. And we're going to start with a three note per string shape that we can use as an investigative 
uh, kind of shape so that we can discover some things about your technique. Let's begin with this one, right? So if we start with finger number one, we're going to put it on fret number three on the low E string. Finger number two, we'll go on fret five on the low E string. And then finger number four, we'll go on fret number seven on the low E string. That's three, five, seven, fingers one, two, four. We would refer to this just out of pure curiosity as the stretchy one, two, four shape. You can see because it's not frets, fingers one, two, and four all in a row, we've stretched out finger number one to create a little bit of a gap here. This is a very common thing in certainly in faster three note per string guitar playing. So that's something we're gonna get into. So we're gonna play this on this string. It's gonna sound thus. We'll also play on the next string where we have three, five, seven once again. So we have three, five, seven. And that's gonna be the lower part, the lower part of our shape that we're gonna to use to investigate our technique today. Now, the next thing we're gonna have is on our middle two strings, we're gonna have frets four, five, seven, four, five, seven, four, five, seven. Once again, four, five, seven, four, five, seven. And that we refer to as a one, two, four shape. You'll notice that there are three notes on every string here. This is gonna be important. The next shape we're gonna use is gonna be uh, fret five, fret seven, fret eight. We're gonna play that on the lowest string. Oh, sorry, on the B string rather, lowest string. We're coming back to that, I'm preempting myself. We're gonna play five, seven, eight, then five, seven, eight again. So to recap, we have three, five, seven, three, five, seven, four, five, seven, four, five, seven, five, seven, eight, five, seven, eight. Or you might think about it as stretchy, stretchy, one, two, four, one, two, four, one three four one three four that's fingering shapes now we don't need to worry too much about the uh the the musical content of this just yet this is just an easy shape that we can use to uh, learn some things about our playing and our current capabilities so let's play this along with the backing track right we're going to go like this uh, i actually play this with index ring and uh pinky and i'm missing something nick uh says pj pardon me dry throat um I wouldn't say so. I don't think you're missing anything. Um, I would suggest in this particular shape, I would play it with one, two, four, personally. But Paul Gilbert does just fine with this shape. So maybe you have massive hands. Maybe it's one of those things. Or maybe you just prefer that. That's a perfectly valid way to play. Also, every uh, status quo song ever. <laughs> Follow you up. Plays with this, right? Dead easy. <laughs> so anyway, Nick Harrison here goes fantastic. I'm playing fast. That's just short and notes played together. <laughs> for sure, for sure it is. But we've done like months of streams on playing cool blue stuff. It's time to play some short notes. So anyway, listen, right? So we've got this string with this uh, string of notes. Let's play together, and then I'm going to test you guys on playing a few different versions of this. If you want to get hold of this backing track, by the way, this backing track is our A. Um, sorry, it's rather our E big hair modal backing track. So, very quickly with one, two, four, let's play for it. Three, five, seven, three, five, seven, four, five, seven, four, five, seven, three, uh, five, seven, eight, five, seven, eight. That's what we have on the top, right? Let's play top to bottom. Let's go. Now, don't worry too much about how you're playing this just yet. Let's try playing in reverse and see if we can play it backwards on ourselves. So let's go like this. We're going to get into the shred in just a moment's time. Now, if this feels challenging, don't worry, because there's something about this traversing all the way across the fretboard without coming back on yourself that can be a little challenging. Uh, did you change uh, to you? Uh, one, three, four, finger in the beanie. Yes, in D9, D. Right, that's what we're doing here. Uh, so anyway, once again, we have our shape again. You might think about this as position number one of the G major scale. That's the way to think of the shape, or G Ionian, uh, as just a raise rightly pointed out. Let's try it backwards. We're going to go like this. But functionally, this is Aeolian. Why Aeolian? Because of the chords we're playing it over. So yes, you could think about it as that shape, but the shape is not what it is. So if we've learned the shape and you guys are happy with that, again, take a second if you need to, to really kind of get that under your fingers. I'm going to test you to play this a few different ways, right? And we're going to see what works best for you. Our first thing we're going to do is 
we're going to see if we can play this using a six note sequence. Why sequences and what are sequences? Well, sequences are essentially a little, um, it's almost like a, if you've ever done anything on a keyboard that requires macros, like a, a, a keyboard, like let's say a, a typey typey keyboard, not a computer keyboard. So let's say for example, you edit videos, or you do any coding or anything like that. It's like a shortcut where you press one button and a number of tasks occur. This is kind of the secret to the whole playing fast thing, is to learn to encode certain movements into your guitar playing brain so that they, you think of them as just one thing. You deploy six notes all at once. And we're gonna see if we can discover a six note phrase today that works really, really well for you. I'm sure there will be. I'm sure there's gonna be a great one because uh, we've got lots of possibilities. So uh, Nick Harris is a cell-based thinking. This is 100% what it is. It's also um, something that we refer to in uh, in you know, like motor learning is chunking. Um, so chunking is something you may have come across if you've watched any of Troy Grady's stuff, for example. It's very, very cool. It's a common uh, term in like motor learning theory. So you know, this is proper evidence-based stuff, by the way. Very quickly, by the way, if you want one of these, don't forget, you can use this code, right, to get it. It ships worldwide. So we had some questions about getting this guitar in the EU. It ships worldwide. Use the code Guitar Interactive at checkout to get the Ascender backpack. That's not this bag, by the way. This bag comes for free. Right, that bag's free, but you get a backpack uh, for worth $150 in, like, a point of my brain, because I've read a comment about the brain. Uh, you get a backpack worth $150 for free if you use our code. Um, so it's just a way to save you some money, which is cool. We like that. Uh, you do want this. Uh, anyway, so let's do probably the simplest um, of the six note chunks we can choose. Why six? We'll get onto that in a second. That's another story for a little later in today's stream. Uh, we'll certainly be talking about it in future streams. So let's begin by instead of playing the notes in each string once, we'll play them from lowest to highest once, and then we'll do it again, right? So lowest to highest once, then again. You might think about this as a low, middle, high, low, middle, high chunk. Low, middle, high, low, middle, high. So the way that's going to sound, if we play it along with a backing track, is going to sound something like this. Let me just very quickly throw it on. Now without stopping, what we might get at a slower tempo will be something like this. Now that can be easily sped up to absolutely dizzying speed. So if you're wondering why I said that's a slower tempo and it feels pretty fast, well, it kind of is, but you can really cook with this stuff. Now, if you wanted to get into like guitar world speed record kind of silly stuff, um, where it's not really music anymore, it's just kind of sport, that's fine. I like sport too. Uh, this is one of those patterns that we're going to try playing. So let's throw it, oh, one of the patterns that you might find useful for that sort of stuff. We're going to try playing it today. So real quick, once again, that is a low, middle, high, low, middle, high on each string. And then we move on to the next string and away we go. So let's try that. The reason this works really well is because you can essentially roll your hand from like here to here. It feels quite comfortable. It feels like an easy thing to do because there's nothing complicated going on there in terms of um, in terms of like the, the combinations of fingers. But for some people, this doesn't feel comfortable and that's okay. The whole purpose of today's stream is we're going to discover some stuff that you feel comfortable with. So let's let's begin here. Once again, we'll start with this fairly slow. If this feels like comfortable tempo, then we can go from there. But if you feel like you need to play it slower, then there's some opportunities to do that too. So let's try doing that. Two versions of each scale, from low to middle to high, and then we move to our next string. It's going to sound like this. I'll play it first, I'll go. Let's try that once again, ready? A one, two, three, four. Now what I want you to pay attention to when you do this is are you cooking this? Or are you using some combination of hammer-ons and pull-ups? That's fine too, right? That's fine too. Whichever you do, that's totally okay because we're going to explore all of these. Let's just try it a little bit faster and see if that works for us. So we might get a speed that reads it like this. Now, you 
you may not be able to go quite that quick yet, and that's okay, because we're getting into some fast stuff here. But let's just see if that flies. Ready? Let's go. <laughs> You take turn, two, three, four. All right, nice. Let's see if we can go even faster. Let's go. Now, if you can do that, you are already shredder fruit, right? That's it, you've won, you can log off now. But if you're going, wait a minute, that feels crazy. How am I ever gonna move my hand that fast? Don't worry, we're gonna get there. Remember, this is the shred primer. Shred Primer, it's just to get you over the threshold of all things Shred related. Helps to have a nice guitar as well. Just throwing that out there, this is a nice guitar. It's one of the reasons we chose it, like, wouldn't do a Shred stream, can you imagine? Wouldn't do a Shred stream on a guitar that I couldn't Shred on. That would be hilarious. Uh, so yeah, anyway, um, that aside, let's tackle this from a couple of other perspectives. So we have a little thing that works for us. Let's try doing the same thing, right, let's do the same thing, um, but this time we're going to compare picking everything we're playing to doing, uh, thanks Rick Graham, I already have it down, says Marcin, get on, there we go, it is a, it is a cool Rick example, we love that, um, so yeah, we're going to try doing it with picking versus doing it with hammer-ons and pull-offs, now this is an interesting thing because there are lots of ways, um, there are lots of ways that you can skin the cat as far as shred guitar goes. In terms of techniques, in terms of techniques, we can either do something that we refer to as legato technique, which is not necessarily legato sounding, but it's a note that, uh, the technique rather, that relies primarily on the left hand to generate notes. So what we mean by that is hammer-ons and pull-offs. What are those? Well, just to double check, our hammer-ons are where we take uh, our finger, whatever finger that would be, we forcefully place the finger on the string. We strike the string so that, this is the important distinction, so that the string strikes the fret. It's not our finger striking the string that makes the noise, it's the string striking the fret that makes the noise. Case in point, if I had, you know, if, if it was the finger striking the string, then this would make a note. It doesn't. It's the finger striking the fret. The string striking the fret, rather, that makes the, the note. Seems like a, a semantic distinction, but this little mental flip is transformative for a lot of players. As far as pull-offs, we've already talked about that on several streams. If we were to do pull-offs, there's a couple of ways we can do it. We can use our left hand to pluck a note. That's cool for very loud pull-offs, but for very fast pull-offs. It's better to do it with a brushing motion where we use the friction of our finger, the friction of our rough calloused fingertip to bow the note, like a violin bow. And this can still be pretty loud, but it just won't be as loud as those fabulous Steve Vai kind of things where you get this. It's really big, long language. Massive, snappy pull-offs like that. It won't be as loud as that, but it's certainly loud enough for um, some John Petrucci antics, as Snake Bite has rightly pointed out. It is a John Petrucci sequence for sure. John Petrucci's used this loads. Paul Gilbert's used it loads. It's just a cool sequence. It sounds good because it's a musical thing. It goes up. It feels like uh, the music is going like this in a way that we like. It's cool. And it's also comparatively simple. That's also something we like. So... Let's compare the idea of doing that, which we've just done. That's hammer-ons and pull-offs. Let's compare doing that versus picking every note. Now, what that might that look like? Let's go to our close-up cam. Oh, by the way, I have three cameras in my studio now. So look, we've got a pick and hand cam too. Check this out, right? A pick and hand cam might be something, uh, pick and hand cam, a picking approach might be something where we do this. Now, any guide among you will notice I'm using a downward pick slam for this. We're going to talk about that as we go. But here's another example with it hammer ons and pull offs. It might be something like this. Now, here I'm using my fingers to play the notes for the most part. You'd be just as well for doing it with a, a pick like this. Which is like the John, uh, the Joe Satriani way of doing it. So, you know, pick the first note on the string and do hammer-ons and pull-offs with the rest. Either is fine. Either is fine. Now, we'll talk about muting in a minute. Zinni's got a great question about this, right? We'll talk about, oh, Zinni has got a great question. We'll talk about muting in the Q&A section. So we are going to do a Q&A section a little later on. We'll get to all that sort of stuff. That's going to happen. For the time being, I would encourage you, 
not to worry about it so much. So don't concern yourself too much about this. Uh, so anyway, three, <laughs> three cameras is Dan Smith. Oh yeah, man, we're moving up in the world. It's good to see you, man. It's good to have you on board. Uh, not only that, but also like motivated lightning and everything. But I've been listening to Tom talk about this stuff. Uh, anyway, so uh let's very quickly do a comparison what i want to do with this is i just want to see where you run out of speed fastest whether it's picking or whether it's hammer-ons and pull-offs either is fine right either is fine doesn't matter you're not a better or worse player for being a picker or a hammer-on and pull-off artist whatever I spent most of my life as a legato player uh, and then discovered picking later in life so either is cool right also, neck pickup is a little hack for making this stuff sound smooth. So if you're not in your neck pickup already, maybe think about going to the neck pickup. This is a Duncan 59, it's very cool. So, let's try going hammer-ons and pull-offs first. Let's go like this. I love when the B for sake records there, because he likes that better. Let's try to do it with picking. Same deal. One, two, three, four. That should sound pretty good. Okay, let's increase the speed, and this time let's do hammer-ons. Let's go. Ready? One more time. Two, three, four. And again. Two, three, four. And again. Two, three, four. Now, I feel like we've got to measure that, so let's try doing that same speed with picking, like this. Ready? Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four. Now let's try doing it very quickly at a really fast speed for you shredders out there who are able to do this sort of thing. But let's do it with hammer-ons first and then take them. Let's go. Anyone able to do that? If you are, power to you. You know, you're already shred certified. Let's try picking it. Uh, let's try going. That's where I'm starting to come apart there. That's getting pretty freaking quick. So. Wow, that's starting to come apart for me, but that's okay, right? I'm fine. Just That serves as a demonstration of what I'm talking about here, which is what happens when it starts to come apart and what comes apart sooner. Now, for me, because, again, the legato thing is something, the hammer-ons and pull-ups thing is something I spent um, a very long time doing. Um, that's something I spent most of my... Uh, like most of my life playing as a player, I did the, the hammer-ons and pull-offs thing. Um, uh, that was me, right? That was me. Um, the picking thing came later. The picking thing still is a little slower than the hammer-ons and pull-offs. But what I'm going to encourage you to do with this is whatever information you've gleaned from this, whichever one you find easier, that's what we're going to lean into for the introduction to Shred. So whichever one you find easier, whether it's picking, whether it's hammer-ons and pull-offs, I will encourage you to lean on that a little bit harder. And don't feel as though, um, for example, don't feel as though you have to be able to do both. You should be able to do both somewhere down the line. But to begin with, just having something that you can play fast with is kind of, that's more important than being able to play the same line with every conceivable technique. That'll come later, that'll come later. You will figure out how to do all this stuff. But whatever we figured out first, you got it, right? You got it. So Helmet Strap says, I am really slow. Uh, I am really slow. Um, uh, and struggling to move down the strings too. Don't worry, because it could just be that this technique is super challenging for you. Now, very quickly, here's another little test, right? We're going to do the same lick, and then we're going to do another lick, right? The same lick. This is another the same sequence, but this time we're just going to see what happens with whatever your preferred technique is, whatever your preferred technique is, we're going to see if you can do it without doubling each string and then by doubling each string. What do I mean by that? Well, doubling each string will be this, where we play. We play.
play two versions through this on each string without doubling this, each string would be this. So it's shorter because we don't play each string twice. Let's see which one's harder. I mean, this is going to reveal something about our playing too. So, very quickly, let's try playing with two versions of each string. Let's go like this. Let's go. Roberto Alves, you absolutely can watch it from the beginning of the day. You can catch this on the replay. So, it'll be on YouTube. So, once again, that's playing two versions of each. Ready? A one, two, three, four. Now this should feel pretty comfortable we've already done it, but let's try to do it without doubling each string. So just three notes on each string, like this. Ready? A one, two, three, four. Now, that should feel fairly equivalent in terms of difficulty, but as we start to speed it up, what you'll notice is that the version that is longer but we spend longer on each string, feels easier. We'll get into why in a second. But let's do doubles like this. That should feel okay. Ready? Let's try it again. Here we go. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. And again, ready? Here we go. Cool. Let's do it without doubling. So straight across. Ready? Two, three, four. Now that may feel more challenging. Let's try going faster. Let's try going like this. Versus straight across we get. And then doubling up again. Let's go really fast where we get this. And straight across. Uh, ooh, that gets tough, right? That gets really tough. So what gives with that? Now, you would think that the... Because, uh, you know, you would think that the version with the least information in it would be the easiest one to do. Where we play one string and then we move on. We play it, we move on. We play it, we move on. In reality... Playing that sort of sequence where we go, uh, when to, ah, okay, here we go, when doubling. The double is hard for me because I've been practicing for uh, the single version for months from one of your early, earlier lessons. Oh, well, there you go. That's a kind of a confounding variable, but that's okay, right? That's cool. Uh, sorry, but when you're doubling, how many notes per string? It's six notes, so it's three, it's two times round on each string is what we're doing here. Now, the actual notes we're playing, they're not super important. This is just about revealing some things about guitar playing and the nature of playing fast. But generally speaking, what you'll find is if you're able to, um, if you're able to have more notes before it's time to move on, if you have a sequence that contains more notes before it's time to fire off the next sequence, it's normally easier to play it a little bit faster. So let me show you another fun sequence that we can play with that uses the same idea. Now you pickers out there may find this a little more challenging, but that's okay, right? For you hammer on pull-off types, you may find this like super, super, super simple. I'm saying this ahead of time, but it may not be the case. Now this is another example of a sequence. So what we might get is we might get something like this where we play. <laughs> Starting the low string, we might get something that goes uh, something like this. Well, isn't this just practicing scales? Uh, it says send you. It is in in essence, but we're doing it for a reason. So this is not me just showing you how to play scales. We're doing this for a reason. We're learning some bits and bobs about our playing. So what we might do here is we might take ourselves a sequence where we would play that low, middle, high on our lowest string, and then go to the lowest note on our next string, but then find our way back down to the bottom. So what we might get here is we might get low, middle, high on the E string, and then we might get low again on the A string, but then high, middle, or, five, or seven, five rather, on the low E string, which gives a sequence that runs like this. Know this is the infamous Paul Gilbert lick, which is is this guy who played. 
usually expressed in here somewhere. As like the alternate picking lick. It's cool. The reason it works is it challenges you to chain strings, but it's kind of a comfortable movement. It doesn't feel like it's completely over the top in terms of the information we're doing, what we're, we're having to fire off. And it's because it's a repeatable sequence, which is nice. So what we might get once again is three, five, seven, three on the A string, seven, five on the low string, like this. Now, if we play that one time, and then when we're ready, we play low, middle, high, low, middle, high, which is a sequence we might call six notes ascending, whatever you want to think about that as, we might get something that goes like this. Now, this is a very useful sequence because what this does is it lets us spend loads of time in one position before we have to move our fingers, before we have to move to another string. But it sounds cool and it sounds musical. Check this out, right? We're gonna go to the back of track once again. I'll show you the pick and pound for this in a second because I got on pick and pound, so we can show that to you. But uh, we'll come back to that. So very quickly, the pattern may go something like this at a slower tempo so we can hear what's going on. We might go. That might serve the sequence. Let's see if we play it together, we go. Once again, we go. A couple of comments coming in. Uh, yes, you do see that. We're going to talk about that later. Uh, it's coming. Uh, in this instance, they are, but I wouldn't concern myself too much about that. Don't. Don't worry about that, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so anyway, once again, there's our sequence. What we can do there is we can then take that sequence, we can apply that to every string pair. Now this is interesting, because we can then play it here on the A string. Play it again here, start on the D string. Play it again here, start on the B, G, uh, G string. A little challenging with the B string change. And then again, starting here on the B string, where we get... And if we sequence that together, we end up with something that sounds like this. Now this is a slower tempo. Right, that's a slower tempo, that makes sense. But let's play a little faster. Let's hear what it sounds like. So if we go... Right, that kind of speed. Let's try going. Going a bit faster there, let's go. Now that sound very, very shred-tastic. So if you guys were in, even though we're not going super fast yet, because of the very nature of that sequence, because it's quite easy to remember and slowly snakes its way through our scale, it gives us this really long sounding pattern that really sounds like something very, very cool. But it doesn't demand a lot of our hands because we don't have to change too much in terms of we don't have to change strings very often. We don't have to think too much about it because we're simply firing off two repeating sequences and we're also able to take up a lot of time with that. So if you're playing a solo and you're not really the shredder type, but you just want to deploy a little bit of this stuff, this sequence is a very cool way, or this kind of sequence is a very cool way to dip your toe into the wonderful world of shred. Now, this is not by any means a comprehensive how to shred guide. It's shred primer for a reason. This is just to reveal some things to you about how this business works, how to answer some of the questions like, how do you even remember what you're playing? Or how do I know, like, hey, this is, what's a cool thing to play fast? 
how, what sort of thing are people playing? How do I figure out what works for me and what doesn't work for me? What should I focus on first? This is a way to reveal those kind of things. We're going to be addressing all of these uh, more complex ideas over a longer series of streams. But first, let's just check that out in the context of the solo. So imagine for a second that you're not really uh, Mrs. or Mr. Shredder and you're playing some very tasteful stuff. And this is your back. Maybe you're a blues player and you're at the end. Towards the end of the solo, and you go. I feel like I want some speed. You play that, you play it there, man, you've got something. So, what are the takeaways from this? What are the takeaways from this? Well, they're twofold. The beginnings of learning to be, sorry, auto folks is becoming uh, an enemy for me. If I put my hand here, it wants to see the hand. It doesn't want to see my face, with good reason. I don't want to see my hands and not my face too. Uh, so anyway, um, what do we take away from this? Well, the first thing is to begin by leaning on the things that you're good at, and you're good at in terms of your natural aptitude for things. If you feel you're naturally more apt, um, naturally more apt for legato stuff, Cool. Picking will come your way. You're going to have to learn that stuff eventually, but not to begin with. Because to begin with, what you want is something you can use now. You can use something right now. Get it in your plane. Get it under your hands. If legato is the thing, that's it. If picking is the thing, that's it. Don't immediately stress about what's coming later. We're going to fix all of these things. We'll be doing deep technical dives on all of these topics. The next thing is that sequences are your friend in terms of being able to remember the notes that we're playing, being able to actually have something viable that you can pull out. When you're playing fast, you don't think about every individual note that you're playing. It's impossible. It can't be done. Um, we think about them as units, as chunks, right? And that's kind of how this stuff works. So finding sequences that feel natural under your hands, that's very important. You learn more sequences as we go. So another example of this, if we were trying to descend for example, if we're going in this direction, a couple of the very quick examples would be uh, if we were to take a look at this classic sequences. This classic sequence, there's two of them here. Let's say, for example, we were to compare a six note descending sequence that went high, middle, low, so high, middle, low. It's the inverse of what we just played, this. We play it in inverse. That feels a certain way, but another sequence that feels better for me, in my opinion, and one that I default to quite a lot of the time, is a sequence that runs high, low, middle, high, middle, low. I'll say that again. High, low, middle, high, middle, low. It's the classic Ingve Malmsteen sequence. Uh, so it runs something like this. That's a very reliable sequence for me that you'll see me do a lot of the time. I'm much more uh, inclined to do that as a default than I am to do this. I feel like that's a little more clumsy. It, it also, you know, it requires, ooh, requires a little more work on my part physically. So when I'm playing something like this, uh, if I wanted to descend on these big three note string scales, what I might do is I may do that sequence quite a lot of the time, where I'd go... Now that's cool, because it sounds musically coherent, but I can also start to break it up with other sequences if I wanted to. Just pure, 
cool I'm totally on the top here, but it is a shredded stream, so what are you going to do? Um, now, these sequences will become like catchphrases in your playing, and the more of them you have, the more interesting these lines will become, and the more versatility you'll be able to get out of this stuff, but it begins with one. You take one step on the road to shred them, if that makes sense. Just a bit slower, please, says Zinni, don't worry, don't worry about it. All this stuff is going to come. This is just to give you some takeaways from this, so some homework for you guys. Things to work on, we're going to reiterate this. I'm going to encourage you to explore the potential combinations of six notes that you can play, six notes that you can play together, uh, whatever it is, six notes that you can play that feels good under your hand and you're able to speed up. Make notes of the ones that feel good. Just very quickly get away with the ones that don't feel as good, if that makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, I can follow you speed easy, Nick, until you <laughs> insert that fast pinky things and that blows me up. Uh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. It's, it's The pinky thing was something I spent a lot of time developing because my pinky sucked when I was a kid. It just, it just couldn't do it. And if you look at my hand, I'll show you my hand on the close-up cam real quick. Check this out. Look at how incredibly long my three fingers are compared to my pinky. My pinky is a tiny wee little thing. Uh, even compared to other people's hands, which are like, you know, the pinky's always smaller, unless you're Steve Vai, um, with his, like, mutant giant pinky. But mine is, is exceptionally small compared to my other fingers. A very long ring finger. And it just didn't want to play ball. I did the Andy James thing for a very long time. It works for Andy. It didn't really work for me. So I shedded the pinky thing for ever to try and compensate for a weakness so i appreciate that man so anyway listen that's your homework we're going to see if we can develop some six note uh, phrases that really really work for you we also um i'm also going to encourage you to practice playing them with either um picking or with legato whichever one feels faster and more fluid for you we're going to do some q a in a second so if you have questions don't forget drop them down below we'll run a little bit longer for this because you guys um you, we, we kind of robbed you of a stream last week because we had some technical issues. So we'll run a little bit over today just to accommodate all of the questions. So if you've got any questions, drop them down below. We've got some very good ones in already. I'm going to get through as many of them as, as I possibly can. But I want to show you this too. For you guys who are GI Plus members, who've been to the link down below, GI Plus, guitarinteractivemagazine.com forward slash GI Plus, where you'll get all of these lessons. That is GI hyphen, then the word plus, P-L-U-S. This is a great uh, series of lessons that I put together. Uh, on this very subject called Picking Strategies Part 1. Part 2 is coming. We're going to do Part 2. It's not there yet. We're doing a little bit of planning on this. But Part 1 is here. Part 1 is super comprehensive. This is what you get in this lesson series along with hundreds of other lessons. Crazy amounts of other lessons. This is just one of them. And you get it as part of your membership, right? This is worth six months of membership on its own, in my opinion. But I would say that I made it. But anyway, you can be the judge. When we come back, we'll be answering your questions. <laughs> Does your picking feel uncoordinated and sometimes you miss notes or fluff transitions from string to string, maybe a little bit like this? When in reality what you want is smooth and easy and transparent feeling picking, a bit like this. Or maybe you've been sold on the idea that there's one specific way that you have to pick on the guitar and everything else is wrong, but that particular cookie cutter approach just doesn't work for you. It feels unnatural. It almost feels like you're fighting your own body to try and make it work. Well, Picking Strategies Part 1 is the course for you. In this course, we explore the many different ways that you can form a full and complete and comprehensive picking approach by examining the various strategies used by some of the greatest pickers of all time. And there are a whole bunch of strategies out there, and I guarantee there is one that is going to work for your preferred picking mechanics, the way you prefer to stand or sit with the guitar, the type of guitar you play, the type of music you play, there is a strategy for you. We're going to explore all of them and I'm going to show you how you can take a single solo study 
and play every line within it using all of the six picking strategies that we look at in this course. And of course, this entire course is available as part of your GI Plus membership. So if you're not signed up already, what better excuse do you need to sign up today? So there you go, guys. That's a look at Picking Strategies Part 1. It's one of the courses you get in uh, your GI Plus membership. Really valuable stuff, especially if you're a little bit further down this shred rabbit hole uh, than maybe some of the rest of us. It's a really deep course, covers all manner of picking stuff with a distinct focus on the most difficult part of picking, which is crossing strings. But crucially, it, it comes at it from the perspective of finding a technique that works rather than me prescribing a technique that works if anything what we've learned from today is that looking at the responses you guys have given like you all like different stuff you all feel more comfortable doing a b c x y z one thing or another thing so picking strategies part one really leans into that anyway we've got some fantastic questions that have come in i'm going to get through as many of them as i can as many as i can uh so very quickly um we got one from our friend marcin marcin says new guitar reveal please i promised you guys a new guitar uh, I can't show you the new guitar today, but the new guitar is uh, here. This is this is the new guitar right there. That's the one. Uh, so if you want to see the new guitar, I'm not going to show you in the stream today, but we will get the new guitar out at some point. What you can do is you can go to my Instagram, uh, at Nick Jennison, where you'll see a reel of me playing uh, in the local music venue, uh, playing improvised solo in uh, a couple. We did a Cliffs of Dover. Um, and you'll see the guitar there. It's a very cool guitar. Uh, it is a Maybach Convair. I'll tell you more about that another time. Love that guitar, but I love this guitar too. And this is our shred guitar of the day. In case you guys have forgotten, our sponsored stream today is brought to you by CRE Guitars. That's this guitar. It folds in half and it fits in <laughs> it fits in this bag. It's not even funny. It's great. I'm literally taking this with me home tonight uh, on the bus. Right, I've got the bus here. I'm taking the bus home tonight and I'm going to take this guitar on the bus. It's crazy. I'll take it uh, to the university where I'm teaching on Wednesday. It's going to be great. Uh, you can take an airplane, take it wherever you want. It's a fabulous guitar and I really like it. So yeah, if you want to get hold of one of these, use our code down below. Uh, we will get a backpack and that gig bag comes as standard. You'll get a backpack in addition to the gig bag worth $150 for free if you use our link. So some questions. Uh, very quickly, we've got a, a one here for uh, Helmet Strap. It says, do you have any exercises to transition across the strings, Nick? Uh, sure do. Uh, and uh, Roberto Alves says, what's the best exercise to sink both hands to start slower? Don't have time to go into those exercises deep, deep, deep right now, but what I will be doing is going into those in humongous detail over the, uh, the, this series of streams, the series of shred streams. So it's coming. So if you join us next week, the week after that, and the week after that, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, we'll deal with all of that stuff. So that stuff is coming. If you want to get a quick head start on it, best place to get it is the picking strategies course that I've just shared. That's very heavy on the string transition thing. Uh, so if you want to get a jump start, that's the place to go and get it. I would show you a litany of exercise today. We'll be doing those in forthcoming streams. But if you don't want to wait, then that's the place. To go. Cheapest chips as well. Cost you, it'll cost you very little to get all that sort of stuff on the go. Uh, Response Audio says, the pick and hand cam was good to see. Pick and hand cam loves you too. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't not now, could I? Uh, so anyway, uh, other comments. Very cool comment here. Uh, Roberto Alves says, I think finger size are not the point. If it was, Shaquille O'Neal would have been a great guitar player. For sure. We don't know that he isn't. Who knows? Maybe he is. Just kept us, kept it from us. Um, I totally agree. You know, like some of the best guitar players uh, I've ever known have comparatively small hands. I don't want to keep uh, just like bringing this up. I don't think it's a sensitive subject, but Tom Quayle has very small hands. And Tom is a monster, just like world leading legato player. Very small hands. The other world leading legato player that came pre Tom, uh, Alan Holdsworth, monstrous hands. It's almost like it doesn't make a difference. I don't think it does make a difference. You've got the hands you've got. And even the thing is, even if it did make a difference, what are you going to do? Grow bigger hands? 
can't be done. So anyway, listen, uh, a couple of great observations here. Uh, one from my friend Justin Ray. I think the trick is multifaceted, light touch, relatively hard, pointy pick. Totally agree. Deliberate, controlled, concise picking movements, uh, simple repeating patterns, and a solid foundation of no values. Well, isn't that the stuff that we did today? Quite a lot of it. Very, very cool. Totally agree with that. So, uh, a quick one from Colin O'Hare. Colin O'Hare is saying, um, sequence one we played today is also the Aeolian mode. If so, that's something else I learned. Now, we have a course on that subject. We have a course called Mastering Modes Part 1 that I think you'll find useful uh, if you want to get more into that. But yes, the context that we're playing in is important. But this gives us the Aeolian mode in the key of E by playing these notes. So if you're in E and you play those notes, you will get an Aeolian mode. You can easily change key based upon moving that around relative to the open E string. So yeah, that's uh, the way you might think about that. So yeah, good question, my man. Good question. We got some other ones here. Uh, very, very good comments. <laughs> so you guys talking about... Um, Talking about hand size, for sure, right, for sure. If you've got smaller fingers, you don't have as far to move them. That's all I'm going to say. And we'll have uh, no small hand jokes about Jeremy Beadle. Um, you guys of a certain age. Um, my 16-year-old daughter has bigger hands than me. I'm a freak. Maybe your 16-year-old daughter has huge hands. Women can have huge hands, too. Um, but again, hand size, not super important, right? I don't think it's a factor. I don't think it's something we should be concerned about because, I mean... Ultimately, what are you going to do? You can't do anything about it. You play the... the I'm trying to say play the hand you dealt, but I didn't mean the pun. Uh, but it's one of those. So anyway, listen. Uh, Chris Brown says, Are you still with PRS? I am indeed still playing PRS. Fear not. Like, all the PRS, look, they're still here. Still have them, right? Uh, so, yes, still doing the PRS thing, but very excited to show you a new guitar um, down the line. It's a cool guitar. You'll like it. I really, really like it too. So anyway, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, let's see if we can just find one more question and maybe get into that. Uh, Keith MOF, here's a good one. It says, uh, do you need to learn to play hybrid picking to play really fast? Now, you don't need to learn any specific technique to play really fast. You don't need to do hybrid picking. You don't need to do tapping. You don't need to do legato. You just need to find one or a couple of these, I would suggest starting with one that you feel comfortable with and works really well for you and begin with that. Now, if that happens to be hybrid picking, that's a good shout, but you don't need that. You don't need any particular technique. You, uh, the te What I'm saying with this is that the actual technique you choose, it doesn't matter which one it is, just pick one. And the one we pick should be informed by which one feels best to begin with. You will learn all the others as you go on but you don't need to learn them all to begin with, if that makes sense. The important part with this is just finding something that works and doing it, and then you have something you can do. You have some music you can make. You can always fill in those gaps later. And remember with this stuff as well, this, the shred thing, you don't need a huge vocabulary to make it work. You don't need thousands of licks at your disposal to be able to bust some of this out, because ultimately, anybody who's not a guitar player, i.e. us lot, doesn't want to hear that much shred anyway. We want to hear a little bit, we want to hear a little bit of energy, but the majority of your time is going to be spent playing probably rhythm stuff, some tasteful chord work, some nice melodic solos, and then when it's time for some energy, pull the trigger on your shred gun, and then out comes the cool lick, all the heads turn, um, all the, the guys that want to talk about plectrums will appear from the audience uh, and ask you what gauge of string you're using, um, all the attractive members of the same or opposite sex, whatever you're into, uh, will vanish away from you until you start playing uh, melodic stuff again. But that's not why we play the guitar. We play the guitar because we're all nerds and we love it. So, you know, bring on those questions about plectrums, says I. Speaking from experience there. So anyway, um, we got another very, very quick one here. Very quick. Uh, great question from... Uh, Oh, I've just lost it. I'm going to find that again one more time, one more time. Here's a good one. Ah, very, very good one. It was Chris Brown. Always good for good questions here. Uh, it says, I mostly improvise lines that aren't really based around sequences, lots of chromatics, but I sometimes struggle to dismount on a strong beat. Now, that is uh, something we all kind of struggle with, is how do you stick the landing? What I will say with this is I actually, rather than addressing the second part of this question, I want to address the first part and the assumption there, because uh, I'm going to suggest that when we play at speed, we're never really or very rarely really improvising sequences that are truly unique. It's almost always something that we've at least played a few times before. The reason for this is it's very hard to generate this kind of information at speed 
it might feel like, and I get this too, because if you asked me, I would say, I don't really play sequences. I don't really play licks. I just play, like, I just improvise. I, I play things that I think are cool. But there are little tropes. There are little combinations of lows and highs, little combinations of chromatics, little combinations of fingers that feel good, string transitions that feel good, that inform my uh my choices so if i'm doing something a bit like this let's say uh let's go to the close-up cam um if i'm doing something like this that's a bit more free form let's say out there at the end um but you, you get the gist of it if i'm doing something like that that feels to me as far as as a player that feels like i'm improvising without sequence because i'm not repeating sequences but every one of those little units because of the way we we think when we play this stuff is in the way that the subconscious mind works when we play this stuff every single one of those little units will be some combination of movements that i've played before so and i crucially crucially i don't mean this is like a a, a a, a rain on the parade thing everyone does this it, it, it's impossible to not do this right this is uh it's a little like um if you were a, which i assume you are like a sparkling conversationalist um and you are just like the life and soul of the party nobody knows what you're going to come out with next you're always entertaining to be around you're not making up words as you're uh, you maybe you are but most of the time you're not making up words while you're conversing uh you're using combinations of sounds that you've produced before you're just stringing them together in novel ways uh, and that's why it feels like it's improvised so that is is an important thing to be aware of um it doesn't mean you should just learn more sequences and that's the issue that's the the what's the word that's the solution to your problem because obviously it's not it's not the question you ask but i just wanted to highlight that because i feel like that's a very important distinction that we want to make very very important distinction um so yeah yeah we go all right sandrew uh, has come up with a very very good one improvisation is mostly combinations of previously mastered patterns arranged and adapted to the present situation can you write scripts for me and i'll just read them because that's a really succinct way of uh of doing it really succinct way of describing what i've just been trying to say very very cool uh and justin ray has one here as well um uh, playing fast is uh also about joining short bursts of patterns and shapes for sure so um we've got some of the little things on here about speeding up i want to address this very quickly uh so one from our friend sacred god slayer says the best thing is to practice improvisations at 60 bpm to ingrain putting tiny sequences together and get your brain used to them for sure it's also a way to edit the uh edit your playing in a way where you can assess whether you like stuff you know like you can assess did i actually like that sequence is that something i actually want to play uh you can hear that at slow speeds for example um i also think it might be really hard on myself yeah guitar players do that man we do that um it's one of those things we we, we it always sounds to me um i always take that to be something that yeah we should work on but it, it shows that you care Right, it shows that you care, and we like that you care. That's a good thing. I care too. Um, so, real quick, some uh, comments on speeding up. Um, very quickly, I want to highlight this comment too. This is a very cool one from uh, Timothy Appling, uh, who who's enjoying what we're doing. Really like that. If you guys are enjoying what we're doing, make sure you hit that subscribe icon, uh, subscribe button down there. Really helps us. Consider signing up for some lessons at GI Plus. Uh, they're great. Uh, here's a good one uh, from Daryl Queen, a longtime friend of the stream. Now, says if you are bumping up the tempo, is it better to go up incrementally or literally just double your tempo every time? I don't think it's better to go incrementally. Okay let's let's um let's address this so when you're increasing your speed uh when you're increasing the tempo you're playing at i feel like it's best to take large jumps until it becomes challenging so if something is the easiest thing in the world then doing it again two bpm faster is going to continue being the easiest thing in the world i would suggest making large jumps in speed until something feels difficult if you make a large jump and something feels really difficult, find a little halfway point. What we do with this is we make big, broad adjustments until we zone in on the most productive area to practice, which is where things feel difficult but not impossible. There's also a magic tempo where things magic tempo also where things change where things change and that is generally speaking around sixty uh, around sixteenth notes at one hundred and fifty bpm. Stuff happens 
uh, as, as far as our perception of notes at that speed. It's a bit of a, a kind of like, um, I guess like a sound barrier, if that makes sense. You cross through that 150 BPM 16th note barrier, we have to necessarily think differently about what we're playing. But yeah, I would make big broad jumps until um, big broad jumps until things start to feel difficult and then make smaller jumps from there. Here's one from my friend Zini. Uh, it says, how do I get the other strings muted, especially ones I'm just coming from? You do it like this. This is an excuse to show off the pick and hand cam. So if you are going in this direction, let's actually get rid of my face there real quick. We don't need that. We'll just go straight to the pick and hand cam. Very good question. Uh, if you are going this way, you're ascending across the strings, like the Ciari Ascender, plug, plug. I'll do it here so you guys can see. What you may do is, if you're playing with hammer-ons and pull-offs, you may use some combination of the inside of these fingers. Notice, uh, I'll show you in this cam very quickly. Notice where my first finger is, first finger here. Notice that is gently touching this string that's an option so that's a good way to get rid of the noise from the string you've moved to but really most of it comes from the right hand palm now what i'm doing here is as i'm and i do this instinctively as i move to a new string i'm just very instinctively instinctively very very lightly brushing with my palm just touching the string that i've just played so if i show you uh like this if i turn the guitar this way so you can really really see what's going on if i play here watch this <laughs> Quite difficult to do artificially like this. And normally you can't see it because my fingers are obscuring what's going on here, but that's kind of what I'm doing. I'll do it again so you can see. Rolling my right hand palm. Now I don't do it in this hand position, that's just so you can see what's going on. What it might actually look like would be this. A bit too aggressive there. And trying to do it so you guys can see. Now, as far as going this way, the muting in that case occurs, we meet the strings we're about to go to until it's time to reveal them, but in this case, the muting occurs. Notice what's going on with the inside of my first finger here. Here, the inside of my first finger and the inside of my other fingers are gently touching the string that I've just played. They don't have to stay there, they just have to touch long enough to dampen the string. So it's okay to lift the fingers, you don't have to have them touch through the strings the whole time, but that's where the dampening comes from in this direction. So great question, hopefully that's a reasonably concise answer, that's what I would focus on on that. Um, so yeah, guys, I'm gonna have to leave it there because we've already run over. I just wanna quickly remind you, very quickly, today's stream was brought to you by Ciari Guitars. This is the Ciari Ascender, it's absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna play it some more, and then I'm gonna fold it up and take it away. Crazy, right? You'll see me do it at the end. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, really glad we could bring this stream to you. Super happy we could do it from my new studio. Hope you guys had a good time. We are back next week with more Shred. Monday evening is coming. Uh, it's gonna be more Shred this Monday, 8 p.m. UK time, same place, same everything. Um, we'll be doing more Shred. Thanks for having me. My name is Nick Jennison, with Guitar Interactive for GI+. I will see you guys next week. Check out the link down below to get your Ciari Ascender. This guitar here, you want it, it's great, right? I want it. I'm taking it away with me. They can't have this back. This is mine now. Um, so I guess it is a new guitar reveal because you don't get this back. This is mine. Um, I'll buy it if I have to. Um, but go to the link down below um, where you get a discount code uh, on your purchase where you'll get a backpack. You get this bag as standard. This bag is killer. It's a great bag. You get a backpack that this bag and your laptop and your pedals and all that stuff fits in. Worth $150 for free if you buy through our link. It's down below. Also go to guitarinteractivemagazine.com forward slash GI hyphen plus, that's word plus, P-L-U-S. For more lessons, my name's Nick Jennison. I will see you Monday for some shred, but I will see you right now also for some shred. See you guys in a bit. See you next Monday. Here we go. That's a big tip for you, by the way. Start, start on the worst note.
Thanks for having me guys. I'm going to uh, show you where you can check out some more lessons at Guitar Interactive Magazine and what you get as part of your GI Plus membership. I'll do that while I fold my guitar up and put it away. Watch this. Never done this with a guitar before. It's absolutely blind and wild. Uh, yep, that's all in place. Fold it up. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I love it. Just, there's my E-string. Fold it up. Put it in its bag. And away it goes. Off to sleep. That's coming to the college with me tomorrow. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for having me. My name is Jenison. This is what you get as part of your Guitar Interactive lesson membership in GI+. Plus. Check it out. My name is Nick Jennison and it's a pleasure to introduce to you GI Plus, the brand new lesson platform brought to you by Guitar Interactive. We've assembled a team of the best players and educators in the world to bring you exclusive lessons covering everything from metal to blues to fusion and everything in between. Want to level up your shred chops? Check out How to Play Fast by Andy James. Or how about Sweet Picking with Rick Graham? Maybe country's more your bag. Well, how about a full-length exclusive country guitar course from Andy Wood? Interested in learning how to play over changes? Well, members get access to hours of exclusive lessons from fusion maestro Tom Quayle. Or maybe you want your playing to sound more soulful. Well, who better than Chris Buck to show you how it's done? Or perhaps you want to learn the secrets of the masters. Well, members get access to over 60 feature-length tech sessions where our tutors painstakingly decode the styles of players like David Gilmour, Eddie Van Halen, John Petrucci, Larry Carlton, Slash, Tosh and Abbasi, Paul Gilbert, and many more. You get all this along with exclusive live webinars, free backing tracks, competitions, and so much more. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for GI Plus today.